Welcome to sixth grade history. This is for lessons 157 and 158. So this is our double up for history. Um, so this is Wednesday. We are looking at pages 315 to 321, the very end of the chapter. Um, you do have a quiz in the next lesson over um, pages 310 to 318. So not the whole chapter, but 310 to 318 and Map Mastery 17. And so Let's take a look at Map Mastery 17. It is on page 372, but um, the map uh, is 352 to 353. So this is of the map of South America. Um, and so you're going to need to know locations of countries on this map. Um, and so you might need to know like the Andes Mountains and the Atacama Desert and the Amazon River, just basic, basic things like that, not anything too in depth on this quiz. But knowing some of those main countries like Brazil, the largest of course, um, the Colombia, Argentina, Chile. Um, so some of those, Peru, just being able to identify those ones um, on the map, okay? Uh, so all right. All right, so we're gonna do I'm gonna do a little bit of a review with this map. Uh, so, first of all, I want you to find, uh, so make sure that you're on the map page, find Brazil, okay? That'll be the easiest one to find. So find Brazil, put your finger on it, okay? Very good. All right, now I want you to find Ecuador, Ecuador, okay? There, right with where the Andes name is um, at the top there in green, Ecuador. All right, find Suriname, Suriname. Okay, it's the middle one of those three at the top, Suriname, um, and then you've got Guyana and French Guiana, okay, um, so. Guyana, Suriname, and then French Guiana, the way those orders. Okay, find Paraguay. Paraguay. Okay, they're right above Argentina in pink. Okay, it goes, it's there. Um, there's a little bit there, and then above the, on the, <laughs> it goes between the two pages um, there. You can see that. Uh, what about find Colombia? Colombia. Okay, it's right up there at the top. It's the one that connects to Panama, so the so Central America. Find Uruguay. Uruguay. Down there at the bottom. So if you see Rio de la Plata. It's another river you're gonna to need to know that when it comes in from the Atlantic Ocean, right below Uruguay. All right, find Bolivia. Okay, it's about the middle. Um, it's that orange. Huh, that is really interesting. Oh, these pictures aren't lined up quite right. Okay, sorry, that's okay. Bolivia's there. Um, find Chile. It's an easy one too. It's that long green one along the back side. Find Peru. The purple one there at the back <coughs> underneath Ecuador. Venezuela. Between Colombia and Guyana. Um, and Argentina. 
is the big one in the bottom. So you have Chile and Argentina. Those are the two that make up that bottom section of, the, of South America, okay? So study those. Uh, make sure to know those for your quiz. All right. The Amazon River. We have some things that we know about the Amazon River, of course. Uh, it's the second longest river in the world, but because of its uh, the volume of water and how deep it is in some places, it's actually the largest river um, in the world. And so it contains more water than the Mississippi, the Nile, and the Yangtze River together. All three of those. Yangtze is in China. Okay. Um, it's about 4,000 miles long. It's only a few miles shorter than the Nile, so that it would be the longest if it was a few miles longer, but I think it ran out of room. Um, and so it begins high in the Andes Mountains of Peru and flows eastward through northern Brazil into the Atlantic Ocean, okay? Um, it has a lot of tributaries, and those are rivers that come off of it. But, and many of them are over, six of which are over a thousand miles long. One, the longest tributary is the Madeira River. And this one um, goes south of the Amazon. So you have the Amazon River that goes about straight and then um, the Madeira kind of goes south. Um, and you can see that on the map. Uh, but this is, this is one that you will need to know before the final test, um, I do know that. We, we've got several rivers in North and South America that you're going to need to know. The Madeira, Amazon, Mississippi, and it, some, several of its tributaries, Ohio, Missouri, and Colorado, and, um, oh, not the, the Colorado is a different place, but, um, yeah, there's three of them off of, off of the Mississippi that you'll need to know. Um, but you, we're going to be looking more at rivers as we continue, as we finish up, but, um, so the, the Madeira is the, it's longest tributary. It's over 2000 miles long. So the Amazon river basin is a tropical rainforest. It's the world's largest. And it stays about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, about the same temperature. Um, it may fluctuate just a little bit, but it's about the same all year round. They're they, in South America, they call their tropical rainforest selvas, okay? There are many, many plants and, and animals in this region. We don't know how many um, varieties of orchids there are because there are so many that no one has been able to count all of them. Um, there, there, there's just so many of them. And um, they get a lot of rain. Of course, they're a rainforest, so they get 50 to 120 inches um, a year, depending on the location and the altitude. Many places receive well over 100 inches annually. Um, of a, there's the wide variety of animals, jaguars, sloths, anteaters, snakes, parrots, monkeys. Then in the river, there's manatees, piranhas, crocodiles, and giant leeches. Not fun. Um, some of the plants that you would find are uh, rubber trees. Um, and you may think that, that that was just something that someone made up, and that's not true. Rubber trees are actually, um, we, we actually get natural rubber from rubber trees, but there are synthetic rubbers, which are man-made and they're made by chemicals. Um, and they are cheaper than the actual rubber from a tree, but they're also not as, um, not as good. You, you don't, the natural is always better. Okay, we're gonna talk about a little, a little bit about Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, Pete Fleming, Ed McCauley and Roger Uderin and the Aka Indians. Um, and Quechua is part of that. Um, and it's over there too, but it's, um, anyway, so Jim Elliott was a yielded servant um, there, that missionary heroes on page 316. And 
their story, these five men had a love for God and a love for sharing the gospel with other people. And their love for other people unfortunately led to their death. But it was while trying to share the gospel with these people and these people didn't understand. Um, and so he, Jim Elliott and his wife went to Quechua um, or to tell the Quechua people. Um, and they, while they were there, they, <clears throat> his wife was um, Betty or Elizabeth, it's short for Elizabeth. And while they were there, they heard of another tribe, a nearby tribe that called the Akas. Now today that tribe is known as Warani. Um, so we don't, we don't call it them the Akas anymore. Um, they're from Ecuador and they wanted to tell them about Christ. And so they founded what they called Operation Aka, Operation Aka. So these, these men and their wives, um, Nate Say, Pink Fleming, Ed McCauley, Roger E. Darren, and, and Jim went, Jim Elliott, went to try to form a, a friendship with them and, and try to tell them about Christ. Well, they started, um, <clears throat> at least two of the men were, at least one of the men were pilots. I can't remember how, if there were others that were pilots, but um, in those jungle areas, they would need to take a plane um, and sometimes they couldn't land a plane somewhere. So they would, um, in, they, they developed a system of lowering gifts to them by a rope. And so they had a crate full of gifts for the people. And, and they thought that they, as they tried to contact the people that perhaps they would, would be open to hearing about Christ's love. And, um, so they built a tree house on the beach of the Curare River, and then they flew over the, the village daily and, and invited them to the river. Finally, two Aka women and a man came out to meet them, and so then they gave them the gifts, and, and they took the man for a ride in the plane. You know, they thought, well, now we'll be friends. Maybe now they'll be friends with us. Um, but they left, and no one else came. A few days later, they were flying over the forest, and they saw some fly, some people running to, to the beach. And so they thought, this is it. And so they radioed their wives, who were not with them. Um, it looks like they'll be here for the early afternoon service. Pray for us. This is the day. Those were the last words anyone heard from either Jim Elliott or Nate Saint. The Akas had come to kill, not to be friends. And I don't think anyone really knows exactly why the Akas thought these men were a threat to them. They didn't leave any of them to, to, to be witness of, of what had happened. But later, um, Elizabeth, the wife of Jim, and Nate's sister, Rachel, met two Aka women, coming, Aka women coming out of the jungle and told them about Christ. They went back to tell their tribe. And, and soon Elizabeth and Rachel were able to go in and tell them about Jesus. And, and many of them were saved. You know, these were the people that killed the brother and husband of these women. And yet they were still willing to tell them about God. That just shows how great their faith was and how much they loved people and they loved God. You know, Jim Elliott was known for saying this. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. You know, Jim Elliott had given his life and reaped a harvest of souls that meant there were many people that came to Christ because he was faithful to God and he was faithful to tell them about Jesus. And that's something that we should strive for to, to have that level of faithfulness, even if, even if someday that means that we are killed for Christ, 
you know, that's called a martyr. That's someone who dies for Christ's sake. And, you know, there's God rewards those who, who die for his, for his sake, who die trying to share the gospel. Because that's the greatest thing that any of us can do. All right, let's get back to, to this. The Indians of the Amazon. So we talked about some of those Indians. Um, we got the, the Arawak, uh, Arawak, some of the tribes um, and other Indians lived in this. But, <clears throat> you know, at one time they were the most feared and savage Indian tribes. But most of them have given up those practices of cannibalism and head shrinking. Some have left the tribes to work on plantations where they've adopted European ways. Many who remain in the jungle, however, are controlled by superstitions, evil spirits, and traditions of self-torture. Um, and so they usually live in, in family units of 40 to 60 members. Um, they often don't wear anything except for a band of leaves around their arm or um, their leg. Um, they believe that it will help them, give them extra strength in hunting and battle. They usually live in grass or palm fronds, huts, and they'll, they'll share a, a common They'll commonly share a hut, which may be 100 feet long and almost 100 feet tall. Wow. Some will sleep on floor mats, but most will sleep in hammocks. Um, the food that they eat. So they'll eat fish from the Amazon River. Um, and then it's tributaries wherever they are. Birds, monkeys, and other small animals from the jungle. Um, they'll garden some um there's there's cassava which is um an edible starchy root and so they they plant they'll clear a path of a plot of land and so they'll either clear it by hand or they'll burn the underbrush <clears throat> and then they use that plot until it does it can't grow anymore so then, until they realize that it has um all the nutrients are gone from it, and so then they'll, they'll clear a, nu a new plot of land. Um, so they have several ways of catching fish. They will sometimes beat poles along the river bottom to scare the fish to the surface, and then they'll spear or net them for dinner. Um, they might beat the water with poison branches where the fish will die, but this poison won't harm the Indians. It'll just kill the fish. Um, when they hunt, they usually use blow guns or with small darts tipped with poison. Um, curare, cu curare, curare. Um, and they can send those up to 120 feet. Wow, that's far. Um, they do have trouble finding food and they, there's lots of um, disease carrying insects and some and many of them will die from that. Um, their religions, um, they, they, they're very superstitious um, and believe in the evil spirits. Um, so they'll harm themselves to make it thinking that, um, you know, it will give them a good hunting or fishing trip if they cut their legs with razor sharp teeth. Um, by fish, you know, thinking that the animals, the spirits live within all of nature and they fear the spirits and they don't want to um, cause them to, to be against them. There's one tribe that grinds up the bones of dead relatives and eats them so that the spirits of the dead can be released and will not bother the living. Or living. Um, The people of some tribes have been known to bury themselves alive when near death. And so that that just shows you that when they don't, people who don't understand the love of God and what God has done can lead them into believing things like superstitions and, and evil spirits. Um, you know, many people have given their lives to reach these Indians with the gospel. 
but there are still tribes deep in the jungle that have never heard the message of God's love for them. And so it is important that we continue to send missionaries to these places to tell people about Jesus. Um, all right, so moving on, we've got the Incas. They had a, their first, their center of civilization was Cusco. Um, and it, it was a, oh, let's see. Oh, sorry. Um, and from there, they conquered the surrounding tribes and built an impressive empire. They left magnificent art projects and architecture and agriculture. They were great builders. Um, some of the roads up the hills were very steep, and so they would zigzag so that it wasn't quite so hard on animals and people for travel. Um, With the social classes, they had rulers, nobles, uh, common people, and slaves. So the rulers and nobles would live in these great stone palaces. They would have um, servants or slaves. And the common people were most of them, and they were farmers. Many of them were farmers. Criminals or people captured from other tribes were used as slaves. Um, and so that was their, how they did that with their agriculture. They grew grains, beans, many kinds of vegetables. Um, corn was a, a main crop and some of that was used for popcorn. They also dried meat, fruits and vegetables and raised llamas, ducks and guinea pigs for meat. Um, so they were very, um, very wise in all of that. With their education, um, they actually did educate some of the girls. So a lot of these places, um, would only educate boys, but here they did pick some of the girls um, and then they studied um, religion and history, and, but those selected girls were also trained to be servants in the emperor's palace or to be wives of nobles. And so they, they specifically wanted educated women for certain things. And so um, that was what they did. Um, they didn't have a, a written language or an alphabet, so they memorized all of their poetry and history and passed it down orally from generation to the next. So they, they didn't have a way of writing it down. So they just told everybody what it was and then you just memorized it. Um, their handiwork, they would build uh, weave uh, beautiful fabrics from the wools of llamas and alpacas. They're also, um, they would also do stoneworking um, and, but they didn't use a mortar, which would bind bricks or stones together, but their stones fit together so closely that a knife blade could not be inserted between them. So they were so good at their, that stonework that they didn't need a mortar in between. So that's pretty amazing. Um, their, they did, they had a lot with, did a lot with silver, copper, bronze, and gold. Um, with refining it and making utensils and jewelry and other items. Um, the Spanish discovered the Inca Empire in 1532. Francisco Pizarro um, was a Spanish conquistador. He was in search of gold and glory and he kidnapped the Incan ruler, Atu Atahualpa, um, and he held him for ransom. They gave him enough gold and silver to fill the room, a room in the palace, up to the height of a man. They gave everything that they could trying to get their, their ruler back, but he was executed. The Spaniards executed him for rejecting Catholicism. You know, there were various uprisings between 1532 and 1569, um, and Finally, in 1569, the Spanish defeated the Inca Empire. You know, there, there aren't, the Incas don't exist as a nation today, but many people can trace their ancestry back to before Pizarro. Um, 
Many Peruvians still speak Quechua. That is the Inca language, okay? So that's, that's where the Inca language comes in. All right, so then we have some explorers. We've got Cabral, um, Pedro Averis Cabral. Um, he discovered and claimed Brazil uh, for Portugal. Amerigo Vespucci explored the coast of Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina. He was the first to realize that this was a new land, that this was not Asia. And so some map makers in, um, a German map maker in 1507 decided that we should call our land America in honor of him. There was Magellan, oh, I'm so sorry. Ferdinand Magellan sailed south of the coast of Argentina. He discovered the strait that's named after him, the Strait of Magellan. Um, and he was the first to sail, first European to sail from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. Um, some of the conquistadors that were there, we've got um, Pizarro and Pedro de Valdivia. Um, they had gained control of some of the Southern American in American Indians. Araucania Indians of Chile continued to resist the Spanish for 300 years. Um, and so there were many, many battles fought between the two. Um, and so, um, but Spanish and Portuguese people began coming and, and you know, started in the 1500s and, and all the way to the 1800s would just poured into these new lands. And um, the South, thus South America was fairly well colonized before the first year English settlers landed at Jamestown in North America in 1607. So there were a lot more people in South America that the, the cities, there were cities and, and everything um, before our uh, pilgrims came to Jamestown. All right, so there was struggle for independence. Jose de San Martin um, led Argentina and Peru in their revolt against Spain. He also helped Bernardo O'Higgins um, fight for Chile. And then we've got the George Washington of South America, Simon Bolivar, okay? He was a famous patriot um, in this struggle. He was born in, in Venezuela, educated in Europe. Um, he, then he returned to South America after school and joined the fight for independence from Spain. Bolivar gave his own money to feed and clothe his troops. He freed Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, and part of Peru. The part of Peru that he freed became a separate country named Bol Bolivia in his honor, okay? And so then by 1830, all of South America, except for those three Guianas, modern Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana, was free of European rule. And so um, th this man is, is to, it, he's credited with that, uh, with leading the people to, to this victory. You know, their greatest need in South America is for the gospel because many of them um, worship, worshiped nature beforehand and then Catholicism was brought in and many of them were, their lives were threatened like, like the Incan ruler that was killed for, that they were supposed to accept this, this belief of Catholicism when they, they had grown up so differently and, and so um, they would, they outwardly, they accepted the outward um, form of Catholicism and combined it with their own pagan worship. And so that's what happens with a lot of people that are forced to take on something or, or they, they hear it and they think, oh, that's good. I'm just going to add it to what I have. But, um, you know, Catholicism isn't the truth any more than the nature worship is. Um, and so um, there are, there have been Protestant missionaries in the early 1800s that came, John, James Thompson came, <clears throat> an Englishman, 
And he started schools in Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, and Peru using the Bible as the main textbook. Um, so they were received warmly at first, but were later persecuted by Catholic officials. Um, and other Protestant missionaries have faced hardships in going in there. Um, even one man was imprisoned for selling Bibles. And, and those, who, those South Americans who accepted Christ were ridiculed or persecuted from friends and neighbor, neighbors. But, you know, many of them stood firm to their new faith because this was a big decision. Um, by 1900, there was a Protestant riff, uh, witness in every country in South America. You know, even today, there are many, many Christian missionaries in South America that are spreading the gospel, but there are still tribes that, that haven't heard any, any of, um, they haven't heard of God's love. They haven't heard the Bible. They haven't been, um, given the opportunity to make the decision whether to choose to accept Christ or not. Um, and you know, inside everybody, God, inside everyone's mind, God has placed this, this knowledge that there is something greater than ourselves. But if you don't know what that is, if you don't pursue that, you'll never, um, you'll never discover what, what really, what God has, has given to each of us. And, um, but you know, there's been many tribes, many examples of some tribes that have said, we prayed, we prayed for someone to come and tell us about this, this, this God, this force that was greater than ourselves. And, and, when they prayed, God sent a missionary to tell them the truth. They were ready to hear the gospel. And, and yet there are so many more that we, we can't forget that we need to, we need to be praying for. And if God opens the door of opportunity for you and, and wants you to go somewhere, you need to obey and go. Um, so just some different things uh, about the Indians in the Amazon and the, um, the Amazon River. So go ahead and read pages 315 to 321. Answer the comprehension checks on page 318 and 321, and then do CCU 17B, numbers four and five, C, numbers three and four. Um, Oh, E all and F all, okay? So do those um, and on paper and then study pages 310 to 318 and that mastery 17 for the quiz tomorrow. And I know that that was quite a bit, but um, that was two lessons combined. And so um, take some time, take a breather maybe. Um, and then you should be, you should have one more lesson today, um, but we will see you in the next lesson.